Welcome back to Daytime, everyone. Cervical cancer is one of the most common kinds of cancer in women, yet it's often called the quiet cancer. And that's because oftentimes there are no symptoms with the early stages of the disease. But there are many things you can do to prevent your chances of getting cervical cancer. Dr. Deborah Freeman can explain more. Good to have you here. Thank you. Good morning. All right, so what screenings should we get right off the bat to prevent cervical cancer? So everybody's favorite thing that women get to go do is go to your gynecologist and get a pap smear. The reason pap smears are the best way to detect cervical cancer at its earliest stages. Gynecologists can look visually at the cervix and see if there are any changes on the face of the cervix that might indicate an, an early cancer developing. And that pap smear, which is taking a sampling of a few cells right off the face of it, can try to look for cancerous changes before they're even evident to your gynecologist. And that's just that once a year pap smear, that right? Once that's a year it? pap smear, that's it. That is the most important tool. At what age should young ladies start getting the pap test? Um, so there's not a specific age. Our recommendation is at whatever age a woman becomes sexually active. That is when we recommend they start those visits with the gynecologist. Certainly by the age of 20 or 21, a baseline visit should be done. Um, women who are in their sexually active years are at the highest risk for cervical cancer. And so yearly visits, again, starting at age 20 or 21 and going all the way through past menopause is highly recommended. Hmm. Are there certain factors that make some people more at risk for cervical cancer? There are a few risk factors. The main, one of the most interesting ones that's been identified is a, a disease called HPV. Which, which we've been hearing a lot about lately. A lot about human papillomavirus. Um, and that is a, can be uh, endemic in some populations, endemic in some women. And it can be tested for and treated for. So human papillomavirus, a very common virus, when detected early can be tested for and there actually is an increased risk of cervical cancer developing in women with this HPV. There is actually a vaccine, an HPV vaccine that can be offered to young women and even girls to decrease the risk of developing the HPV virus and then subsequently cervical cancer. What about treatments for cervical cancer? Once you've been diagnosed and, and say you've got, gotten it early, what can be done then? So the good news is if you go in regularly for your pap smears, the gynecologist can often pick up the cervical cancer when it's just confined to the cervix, localized to the cervix. And sometimes a simple procedure called a, a conization, which is where just a small portion of the cervix is removed, can be effective in getting rid of the cancer completely. Even with regular checkups and with any kind of cancer, sometimes it will develop kind of beneath the surface and isn't picked up at its very earliest stages. So other procedures, other directed procedures, still for localized disease and very curable disease can be offered from a surgical perspective, a hysterectomy, removal of the cervix and the uterus and, and sometimes the ovaries, or in other cases, forms of radiation, local radiation treatment can be delivered and be curative for earlier stage cervix cancer. Um, sometimes um, the cancer does not present itself in an early stage and may have spread to tissues adjacent to the cervix or to lymph nodes. And then a combination of surgery um, with chemotherapy and radiation is often utilized. Okay, you know, I want to go back to some of those risk factors, if that's okay. Sure. Um, and, and we saw some other points on the screen a little bit ago because there's other things like smoking mm -hmm. um, that can be risk factors as well. It, it, tell us some of the other risk factors because some of these things we can easily avoid. Mm -hmm. So as you see on your screen, the um, in addition to the HPV, which is kind of a preventable virus, smoking is associated with many cancers, lung cancer, bladder cancer, and cervical cancer. So you hear it all the time from oncologists, hear it again from me, the best thing is just not to smoke. Put on the cigarettes and, and chew something else, chew chewing gum or something. Um, the birth control pills is a loose association with cervical cancer. Women who have been using oral contraceptives for many, many years, 20 plus years, okay. is a slightly higher risk of cervical cancer in those women and endometrial cancer. Multiple births, and that's probably because of trauma to the cervix through multiple births. Uh, mm -hmm. um, and multiple sexual partners, and that's often because of an introduction, not necessarily of HPV, but of other sexually transmitted diseases that cause inflammation of the cervix and can be associated with higher risk of cervical cancer. Okay, you might not have the symptoms, so that's why it's important to go for your pap yes, test. Yes, ma'am. All right, Dr. Deborah Freeman, thank you very, very much. Thanks for having me. Hey.